One of the events highlighted in Documents Volume 7 is the return of William W. Phelps to the church. I think this story really highlights some of the characteristics of Joseph Smith, especially his forgiving nature. William W. Phelps had been one of the prominent members of the church. In 1831, he was baptized and assigned to go to Independence, Missouri to help build the city of Zion there by establishing a printing office. William did so, and he began publishing the church's newspaper, The Evening and the Morning Star, as well as working on a compilation of Joseph Smith's revelations entitled Book of Commandments. In fact, it was his house and printing office that was torn down by the mob in July of 1833. In 1834, William was called as uh, a counselor in the presidency of the church in Missouri. And in 1835 and 1836, he came to Kirtland, Ohio, where he spent a considerable time with Joseph Smith and participated in the dedication of the Kirtland Temple. Unfortunately, in 1837 and 1838, William ran into some trouble with the church, mainly over issues dealing with church finances and land and he was excommunicated from the church in 1838. He then testified against Joseph Smith in a hearing on charges that Joseph was guilty of treason against the state of Missouri. And it was based in part on William W. Phelps' testimony that Joseph was incarcerated in Liberty Jail in the winter of 1838 and 1839. Because of this, there was some bitterness between William and Joseph. In fact, later in 1839, after Joseph Smith uh, had escaped Liberty Jail and was living in Nauvoo, William wrote a letter to him offering to sell some land in Missouri that belonged to Joseph Smith Sr. Joseph Smith replied to this letter, and he basically told William W. Phelps to mind his own business. He said that he had already suffered enough because of William's officiousness. This kind of shows that William's betrayal hurt Joseph Smith. Later in 1840, the situation had changed, and William now felt contrite. He felt sorrowful for what he had done to Joseph Smith. And he wrote a letter to Joseph from Dayton, Ohio, where he was then living, asking that Joseph forgive him and asking that he be allowed back into the church. He said in this letter, I want your fellowship, and if you cannot grant that, grant me your peace and friendship, for we are brethren and our communion used to be sweet. After reading this letter, Joseph's heart melted. He believed that William was sincere in his repentance, and he was willing to let the past be forgotten. Joseph wrote back to William on July 22, 1840, saying that he had indeed suffered much at William's hand. He wrote, The cup of gall, already full enough for mortals to drink, was indeed filled to overflowing when you turned against us. Joseph said at the time, paraphrasing a poem by the Methodist poet and hymnist Charles Wesley, Come on, dear brother, since the war is past, for friends at first are friends again at last. And he welcomed William back into the church. William was baptized again and remained a strong member of the church until his death. You can read the letters that William wrote to Joseph and Joseph's response to William in Documents Volume 7, 